In this module, we're going to collect and properly set up the assets we will use in the rest of this learning path, as well as make a minor adjustment to our game mode darts. You will find the instructions of how to download the assets that we're going to be using in the More Information tab inside this Unreal Online Learning course page. Once downloaded, close Unreal Engine if you haven't done so already. Open the project that was downloaded. When opened, navigate to the Darts folder and right-click. Select Migrate. Unreal Engine will then ask which of the relevant assets you want to migrate. Keep them all selected and press OK. When choosing a location to place these assets, select the Content folder of our project. The migration of these assets shouldn't take too long. When it is finished, reopen our project and allow Unreal Engine to finish preparing the assets. Okay, so mine just finished and I'm going to get this back open. Let's take a moment to clean up a couple of things and explore some of the assets we now have for our project. Open the C4 lobby level found in Darts Maps C4 Lobby. Let's look around a bit and talk about what these levels were designed for. We're going to be using two maps throughout this game. We have our lobby map where we will first be placed into the game. Then when we're ready to play the darts game, we will transfer to our C4 game stage. So let's open C4 game stage. This is where the actual dart game will take place. We will stand on this platform, pick up the darts from this podium, and then throw darts on a dartboard that we'll place onto this screen. We'll then later design user interface to play on both screens to give us data about our game, our score, the time left, the hits, the bonus points, you know, all that kind of stuff will be placed on these screens. All the assets we are using here are freely available to use in your own projects. We modified the assets from the Virtual Studio project found in the Epic Launcher's Learning tab. To find these assets in the Epic Games Launcher, go to the Learn tab. Scroll down until you find the project Virtual Studio. Inside of here is the whole collection of all the assets we used to, bu to build the sets here for our game. This is a great collection of modular assets just waiting to be used. Okay, a couple things before we end this course. Open the project settings and navigate down to maps and modes. Set the editor starter map and the game default map to C4 lobby. This way, when we continue into the next course, we'll be exactly where we need to. And the last thing we will do before we get going is go to the core folder and open up our game mode darts. After we spawn the pawn, we don't want to use the defaults that come with the pawn. We want to use the defaults that are set inside of the game mode. So we know that any of the pawn that would be spawned will inherit from BPP pawn darts. So we can cast to BPP pawn darts and plug this in after we possess it. So from BPP pawn darts, we want to set the struct VR player settings to the value that is located inside of the game instance. So we're going to get the game instance, cast to game instance underscore darts, convert this to a pure cast because we know this is the game instance that we're going to be using, um, get struck uh, VR player settings, and plug this in. So now when we start to play, the value of the player's struck VR player settings will match that of the game instance. So when we need to change defaults, be sure to change the defaults in game instance. And this will make sense as you continue. We're going to be using this data in later courses when we're working with hands and interaction and then eventually with UI and additional subjects. So I'm going to save this and close. All right, before we officially end, let's place one of our um, BP player starts inside of the game stage and in our lobby. Actually, I'm going to put it in one of these corners here. Let's take a, just a second and see what this map looks like in VR. Okay, so we have a, an error. We right hand and a BP is not being able to compile. That's okay though, because we want to, we don't want to use the original right hand and a BP. In our BP motion controller pawn, we want to make sure our hand mesh here is using the correct anim class. So instead of right hand and a BP, we want to make sure it's using right hand and a BP darts. So if I go to the uh, characters, to, uh, yeah, VR pawn, virtual reality, mannequin animations, right hand anim darts, this is what the what we're actually going to be using, which is exactly set up the same way, except it uses the newly migrated skeleton 
that's the, the only uh, issue of what had, what had happened. So one more thing I forgot is to make sure that the default value is the same as the start the BB player start that I replaced in the map. So and now I need to go to darts core game instance and make sure the default of player start number matches what's in the map. So uh, I'll place make this one zero. And now when I press play, I'm in the correct location. Okay, awesome. We're in the map that we're going to be using as the lobby as the main map, our starting point in the next portion of our learning path. In the next course, we will begin using these assets to learn about working with hand presence and interactions. See you there.